coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. The table is set, the pie is cooling on the windowsill, and we're ready to talk about what we're thankful for. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? It's going great, Patrick. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Mm, and, and to you as well. And yours as well. I didn't mean to <laughs> leave out yours. <laughs> um, Kind of crazy to already be at uh, Thanksgiving again. It doesn't seem that long ago that like <laughs> again. we were... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's true that 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 the last time we were actually uh doing Thanksgiving and like trying to arrange having like people over and mm-hmm. figuring out like how many people we were going to have over. Last year Thanksgiving, um we didn't know until like the morning of if we were going to have um it was possible that we were only going to be 3 people, but it's possible that we were going to be as many as 7, uh which is <laughs> it, it, it's impossible to plan for. <laughs> well, not a problem any of us have this year. <laughs> oh no that is uh that is that is sadly true but uh we are going to partake in a good old-fashioned uh thanksgiving tradition today and talk about the uh things that we are thankful for from nintendo uh for this year but before we get to that um of course uh we are still existing in the world of the sonic forces borrowing program if you would like to borrow my copy of this game uh, you can, or at least you can try. All you gotta do is email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com, gmail.com and give us a mailing address where we can send my copy of Sonic Forces. You play it for as long as you want or not, and then send it back. We pay for uh, postage both ways, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, one minor wrinkle now is maybe you accidentally get my copy of uh, Untitled Goose Game. Look, the goose is just in there as a spoiler. No one can control it. I can control it. No one can control it. Whatever happens, happens. Uh, I l- appreciate the way that you've described the Sonic Forces Borrowing Program as in, like, we exist in the world of the Sonic Forces Borrowing Program. It's it's like we're all Neo in the Matrix, and we're all waking up to the fact yeah. that the only thing that is, like, everything is a lie except for the Sonic Forces Borrowing Program. Are you saying that the Sonic Forces Borrowing Program is somehow red-pilling us? <laughs> I don't know if I'm comfortable <laughs> using that language. Let's not go down this road. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> you got it, Mark. Uh so we uh, uh and also before we get into uh what we have been thankful for we I got, we got an email uh today that I would like to spend a little bit of time with an email from Lee Lee writes in Hey guys, I was browsing through all the great titles that are currently on sale in the eShop. With almost every title I had an interest in, I kept thinking to myself, quote, "What did Patrick say about this? Why didn't Mark like this title?" Uh and then are you supposed to use quotation marks when you have a quote in a thought? Uh I, I don't know. I think so. I think if you're thinking the thought to yourself, then a quotation is fine. Uh, any way you could point out some of your favorite titles that are currently on sale to help make the decision on what to pick up. Uh, thanks for your help in advance. Listening to your show always puts a smile on my face. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Lee, for writing in. Um, it, it's true. There is an enormous sale on the Switch eShop right now. Um, the to to the extent where it would be impossible to go through um everything mm-hmm. that has been like significantly reduced in price um but i think we can maybe uh call out a few things that we uh did like um that are on sale or things that we expected to like more than we did um just to be like uh you know this is on sale but you know it gets sort of a, a qualified endorsement from us or even a non-endorsement uh if if we really didn't like it or even things that uh there are deals on here that i'm interested in uh, partaking in for example marvel ultimate alliance 3 is 47.99 i am interested in that yeah and for the sake of history we should say that this cyber deal sale is going on now through december the end of december 2nd so in the u.s right, right. so so we've got a, a little bit of time about a week but if we waited until the next episode uh the the, the tuesday episode uh, too late this would no longer be relevant yes 
Um, so Mark, is there anything in uh in in the like main chunk of um uh like Nintendo games that that caught your eye as worth picking up uh on on this sale? Yeah. So uh, there's like th- four that really jump out to me that I want to call out. Um, the Elder Scrolls Skyrim is thirty bucks. Diablo Three Eternal Collection is thirty bucks. Um, Doom is thirty bucks, and then Dark Souls Remastered is twenty. Uh, I own all of these, um, but I and I think <laughs> I bought all of them at full price, and it was worth it then. And uh, I think these are all like good to great versions of these games, and definitely worth picking up if you haven't played them on other platforms, and especially if like the Switch is your main gaming machine, like it has become for me. Then these are all really great games at really good prices. Yeah, and it, it is worth uh, pointing out that uh, Diablo Three is frequently thirty bucks. Um, so like, well, this is a good price, and it is it, its full price is still sixty. Um, that you'll see it knocked down to half price, uh, like all the time. Um, I, I wanted to call out Catherine Full Body is up here for thirty bucks, uh, which is a game that I've been sort of dragging my feet on picking up, uh, even though I know that I like the original Catherine. Um, but you know, coming down from from fifty to thirty. Um, seems like it's a really good deal. Um, the original Dragon Quest Builders is also half off, uh, down to twenty five from fifty. Um, that's very interesting to me. Um, the Outer Worlds <laughs> is thirty bucks, which I I played the Outer Worlds on Switch. I paid full price for it. Um, I don't regret it, but if you have an alternative to play it on another platform, do it there. Yeah. But for 30 bucks, I think it's not like the worst deal if you've been interested in the game and uh, like like I was saying, like Switch is your only or is your main gaming platform. Um, 30 bucks. I, I think the game is for sure worth 30 bucks. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of uh, games that are for sure worth uh, this price, we may have even mentioned this on uh, previous episodes, but uh, Link's Awakening, the Link's Awakening remake is uh, down to 40 bucks from uh, 60. Um probably the price point that that game should have been at in, in the first place. Um, it was still worth it at 60. I still did everything you could possibly do in that game. Um, but a, a, a mega deal at 40 bucks. Um, uh, Hades is back down to $20 from 25. Uh, if you've been listening to any episodes of the show in the last month, uh, you know that I will not shut up about Hades. Um, so that is a good price for that. Um, and also the, uh, the Shovel Knight Treasure Trove is down to 20 bucks from 40. Um, which is, you know, like five games in one and three of those games are really great. So like, go, 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 go get it. Now, speaking of games that I haven't played, but that this deal is appealing to me, um, Tokyo Mirage Sessions is mm-hmm. 40 bucks right now. And that's a game that like, I don't know when I would get around to playing it, but I have, I've always been interested in it. And that seems like a, like something I have my eye on. Um, there are some indie games too that uh, in, you know. In addition to uh, Shovel Knight and ha- and Hades, um, like uh, Katana Zero is eight ninety nine. Ooh, that's um, a good deal. Mm-hmm. Love that game. Uh, Ape Out. Ape Out is seven forty nine. Uh, Ape Out Rules. Um, uh, what else uh, did we really like? Uh, that, that so that that's maybe the, those are like the the heavy hitters from the from the indie category. There are a bunch of Capcom games that are uh on on sale for like half their normal uh price the capcom beat 'em up bundle is only 10 bucks which is another like you get six games in that thing um and it is just in terms of like art and music alone worth 10 bucks and then all the resident evil games uh, like uh resident evil 4 is 14.99 resident evil 5 same resident evil 6 same uh the revelations games are eight bucks a piece um Mega Man 11 is $15. I really like that game. Um, and if you, you know, were a fan of the sort of uh, original Mega Man revivals in, in the form of 9 and 10 and then sort of sat out 11, um, $15 is a, a, a perfect price to, to dig in on that. The final one I'll recommend is uh, just Sonic Mania. Like, it's 10 bucks, which is a great yeah. deal for that game. Uh, I had never played a Sonic game all the way through before. I didn't really, like, understand Sonic. But Sonic Mania made me, like, I really loved Sonic Mania. Like, if they made a Sonic Mania 2, I'd be really excited for that. I thought yeah, it was Oh, a, yeah, I'd be there day one. Yeah, I thought it was a great game. Um, definitely worth the money. 
so th- there are two other things I wanted to uh, call out here. One is that, Mark, what did we, how low did we say Damon X Machina would have to get before we bought it? <laughs> I think we said 20 bucks. I think we said 20 bucks. Okay. All right. So the, the fact that it is on sale for $40, we're, we're still safe. We don't, we don't need we're to buy safe. it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, so, whew, good, good on that one. Um, but if you are interested in Damon X Machina, it's $40 instead of 60 um, And then Mario Party, Super Mario Party is also available for $40 instead of 60 Uh Super Mario Party is a good game, but just be a little forewarned that it is a good game in person only. Um, you know, it, it does seem like Mario Party would be a rich tapestry for some online gaming, but it has really, uh, you know, limited online functionality. There are only a couple mini games that you can play um, with your friends who are not local. Um, so it is, it's, it, 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 it falls short, uh, I think, in, in what it could possibly offer uh, in, in that regard. So, you know, uh, recommended if you have people in the house to play with, that all have joy cons um ev- everyone who plays needs to play on a joy con so if you've got like a joy con and two pro controllers the pro controllers will not function as controllers for this thing so um just be forewarned if you're set up for that and you've got like a family or something that all want to play uh it is it is a, a a good time um all right mark i think we did a really good job there <laughs> <laughs> good for us yeah i'm proud of us um so thank you lee for writing in Uh, Because otherwise we would have just blown right past it uh, and just left everyone to their own devices. Figure out your own deals, guys. (laughs) Um, All right. uh, Let's get into the topic of the show. Let's get into what we are thankful for from Nintendo this year. Mark, before we dig in, can I share with you a fear that I have in this? Yeah, please. Um, Because we have prepared separate lists of three to five things for which we are thankful from Nintendo this year. Uh, And I think what Nintendo has uh, offered is so narrow in 2020 um, that I suspect we will have a lot of these same things that we are thankful for. I think it is possible, um, but I also think it is not possible, depending on... Uh, how we approach this topic, because I agree that uh, Nintendo in a lot of ways was very um, narrow focused this year. But uh, I also think that there were like a lot of things that were different about this year than previous years, which is perhaps the understatement of the century, but uh, <laughs> um, that made it like, uh, a, I mean, it just for sure, it was a unique year for Nintendo, just like it was mm-hmm. for everybody else. And I think like, um, kind of like, the breaking of some of those habits or some of those expectations that I had for the company, um, I it opens up the possibilities for the future. Is twenty twenty the last Jedi of uh, years in Nintendo? Mm, uh, I'm not sure. I know what that means in this <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just soak in it for a while. All right, all right. We'll just we'll luxuriate in it, and we'll come. I'll set a timer right now. We'll come back in five minutes and see how we feel. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, okay. Um. Let's. Uh. I. Well. What. What do you do? You have one of the things that you are thankful for that you think sort of addresses that directly. Yes. Okay. So. Um. I'm gonna. I will start off by diving right in and saying one of the things I am grateful for from Nintendo this year is the fact that there was no E3 presentation. And whoa, yeah, and the reason, and like initially, right, like I think we were all b- bummed out. Uh, and there were a lot of weeks or months where we were like desperate for a Nintendo Direct, we were desperate for news, like there were whispers of it all the time. Yes, but I actually think what we ended up getting in place of that E3 presentation is in the long term, like a lot more fun because instead of having just like that one or two or like three Nintendo Directs that we um, were just constantly like waiting for for news what we got instead was like uh, partner showcases and uh, an indie world showcase indie showcase yeah. and like every like for probably like two months like every week there was at least one new like announcement that seemingly came out of nowhere like paper mario origami king hyrule warriors age of calamity like in sept uh, from the end of august through like October, like we were getting so much news. W- one week was the Mario 35th anniversary direct. 
the next week was Hyrule Warriors. Like it felt like yeah. um that like that cadence turned out to be a lot more enjoyable than just like having no news, having it all dumped in one day, and then having like months of no news again. Yeah, I, I think there's also just like if Nintendo would have like pulled it together to do a normal um direct on the Tuesday of what would have been E3, that like it, they wouldn't have had like quite enough to fill it, you know? Totally. Like, um, especially if they still planned on doing like other little drops throughout throughout the year. Um, and you know, I mean, there have been some great uh, Nintendo E3 presentations, right? Like we talked about five of them that we really liked. Um, but you know, that's stretching back over the course of like two decades. Um, so you know, there there are just as many that are disappointing or that have long stretches where you're like what is happening here why why are we spending so much time with this um and like this definitely cuts down on that sort of feeling of filler you know um and and, uh, you know just from a a practical standpoint for two dudes with a nintendo (laughs) podcast it's nice to have that content really spread out it means that every time that there's like a drop we can really dig into what's happening there um i I think some of our our stronger like episodes or stronger like news episodes have been the ones where we've just been able to go through a uh, direct partner showcase or a mini direct um, and just like really drill down into each piece of them and really say like, hey, these are all the games that they talked about. Um, th- there was uh, maybe like two of the indie showcases that I felt really good about what we were able to like talk about and like highlight um, from from those pieces because there's just so much in them. Yeah, totally. And I also think just from like Nintendo's perspective and from a fan perspective, like what these mini presentations do is they there's so much less like pressure on a Nintendo Direct or an E3 presentation to like deliver like megaton after megaton because when you're going months without news and all it's being filled with are like rumors is you're like man by the time that this uh yeah you know like that this director this E3 presentation hits like it's has to be massive and so i feel like these like smaller ones like was every partner showcase like a home run not really but it didn't matter when you knew that like in a few weeks, you were going to get another one. Yeah. And, well, and also, like, I, I think I, you know, I, I was about to trash the, uh, the, the first partner showcase um, because that was the one that was, um, like, bad, right? It was the one that was, yeah, it was the one that was bad that, like, started with Cadence of Hyrule mm-hmm. uh, DLC, um, but it ended with uh, the two Shimigami Tensei games, right? right? And, well, well, that's not a big deal for you or me. Like, Shimigami Tensei, has a following has fans if you are a fan of that franchise it was huge for you i'm sure Mm -hmm. um so you know i i think that it's sort of uh it it means that not every one of them is going to hit for everyone but um you know that will will hit for someone mark does that does that mean that you never that you want to see uh no e3 ever again from nintendo well i mean this may this may be out of our hands who knows (laughs) if e3 is ever coming back right yeah that's what i was gonna say but no i think um uh, I think what I'd like to see in the future is like a return to, or like a, a balance between the two. Like, um, yeah. I, I think what I've kind of learned is like, I don't really, I, I think the occasional Nintendo Direct was fun. Like that Mario 35th anniversary Direct was a ton of fun, but uh, mm-hmm. I enjoyed these like stealth reveals where it's like, oh my gosh, like Paper Mario Origami King is coming out in eight weeks. Like that's wild. Like <laughs> yeah. we knew nothing about this game and having those sorts of things like happen periodically was like I, I think it'd be great to let's have like one or two Nintendo directs a year and then just fill the rest with um these like uh mini directs and partner showcases and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean I, I would still like to see a um like a full fat uh not um not character specific or not game specific uh nintendo direct at at some point in the next couple months um just because i it has been a long time now right it's been (laughs) it's been since like over a year over a year right Mm -hmm. yeah um so you know it it would just be nice to uh have have one of those just like big injections of like here's what you have to look forward to in 2021 because right now really uh you know all we know is um super mario 3d world and monster hunter right like that's that's oh, and uh, bravely second, I guess, right? 
Bravely Default 2 is what it's called. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that we know other stuff, but just not anything that's like, we don't really know what Nintendo is up to. Just like it was yeah. this year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so for my first thing that I am thankful for, I think this is a, a, a very specific to you and me, um, thing, but, uh, perhaps by extension will also be true for the, the rest of our listeners. Um, but for me, this was a year of 16 bit nostalgia. Um, you know, we in, uh, what was it? March or April when, whenever we did, um, the, uh, Super Nintendo games, we played, uh, Yoshi's Island. We played Link to the Past. We played Super Metroid and we played Star Fox. Um, finding uh, new levels of appreciation for most of those games, um, and also seeing something like Super Metroid as like the flawed creation that it actually is, instead of the uh, you know sort of vaunted perfect game that I still I now now that we're removed from it, I'll go back to saying that I think <laughs> the game is perfect. <laughs> um, but I, it was also just a a big year for um 16 bit games that Nintendo was uh re releasing or making available um a, as well. Um, Donkey Kong Country um, uh, was uh, made available on the uh, SNES Switch Online. You and I did an episode where we ranked the worlds from that, um, and that was super fun. Also, uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 was also made available on the uh, SNES Switch Online. Uh, and Super Mario All-Stars, which is one of the all-time uh, great Super Nintendo games, uh, being that it is a collection of all-time great and Nintendo Entertainment System games. Um, but then also Super Mario Picross is a game that came out and blew me away and re made me like it, it was it was nostalgia and new at the same time, which is like the best of all worlds. This is also the year that I uh, like rediscovered the Game Boy Advance library on the Wii U. So I spent a ton of time looking at 16 bit aesthetics and those sorts of graphics this year. And um, I loved it. Uh, it. That's obviously that's one of my like comfort zone eras of gaming. Um, you know, it, if anything to escape 2020 and pretend that I'm, you know, <laughs> 11 years old or whatever. Um, but yeah, I it's for me, 16 bit nostalgia was like something I got from Nintendo this year. Yeah, I I had so much fun in April doing that retro month because it was like. Uh, force like kind of like forcing us to go back and play some of these games that otherwise I wouldn't have picked up. Like Star Fox was a game that I thought was like, oh, this is like just not for me. And then replaying it really gave me like a renewed appreciation for it. Uh, yeah, I totally know what you mean about that. Like 16 bit aesthetic being such like comfort food. I feel like that was a really important aspect for people in 2020. Um, not just like the 16 bit totally. aspect, but that like. I uh, I think everybody was looking for their like safe space, like their their way to like take a mental break from uh the reality of the current world. And kind of in that same vein, um another thing that my second thing that I'm thankful for from Nintendo in 2020 is Mario's 35th anniversary. Um Super Mario 3D All Stars came at like a perfect time for me. Yeah. uh you know yeah. like uh in like i think for everyone right like yeah. I, we all just needed it yeah like uh you know september and october um everything with the election was kind of coming to a head and having this again like honestly just like straight up like nostalgic kind of like release like being able to go back to these games that i liked so much was such like a comforting thing for me so being able to have like super mario 3d all-stars and look I know that it's silly to be like, I'm thankful for the opportunity to spend 60 bucks to play these games. But like, it, it really was. It was like, yeah, like, oh, man, this came at the perfect time. And then for us to be able to do the, um, like, have like a Mario month and just be able to spend, you know, an entire month uh, kind of like in that world, being able to play new Super Mario Brothers 2 for the first time, being able to share with yeah. everybody like their Mario memories. Uh, that was such a great experience. Yeah, I mean, totally. There, there's also something, you know, I know Nintendo got a lot of crap for um, not really doing too much to, you know, Im improve or, like, upgrade the packages of um, the, those three Mario games that are in um, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. But there is something, uh, like, just so pure about them being, like, just exactly the original versions of those games um, with very minor tweet like minor minor upresing like now uh, uh sunshine is in widescreen like all of these things are just like 
tiny little tweaks um, to make them a little bit more palatable, but still like 100% what they are, like warts and all. Um, and I think like the flaws are a big part of like how you access nostalgia through these things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my, my, my second one is, uh, is related to that, is related to uh, the Mario 35th anniversary. Um, and it is just the original Super Mario Brothers, the game Super Mario Brothers, which came out in a big way this year. I already mentioned uh, Super Mario All-Stars available on the SNES Switch Online. Um, so that's one way that it made itself uh, present. Super Mario 35 itself is another way that like the, it just you know keeps like cycling through levels of the game and sort of like represents what you know of those games um, just over and over again in, in fun and exciting ways. And then, of course, uh, the Mario uh, Game & Watch, which uh, I talked about on our last episode, is something that it has, has very little function but makes me immeasurably happy. And a lot of what it does is play the original Super Mario Brothers. Um, like, I have spent more time playing some version of that game this year than maybe any other <laughs> year in my life. Like, is that possible? Um, it, the, the one thing that it makes me, like, really wish that we did have, uh, either this year or, like, you know, w- within the, the last couple of years, is a new version of NES Remix. Um, cause like, I love seeing old Nintendo stuff represented in like fun and interesting ways. And those games are so good at like pulling out the little micro challenges that are already baked into these, uh, you know, longer games from a long time ago that would have been inaccessible. Um, if you were always starting from the beginning, but the fact that they drop you like right in on the challenge, um, just makes it super accessible and fun. Um, so yeah, it's, that's so something I'm thankful for, but also something that I wish that, that we had is a, a new NES remix. Ooh, I would love for them to make the NES remix games part of like Nintendo Switch Online. And sure, like add oh, yeah. the online functionality, you know, so that way it has that hook. But oh man, that would, that would, I, cause I, I haven't played any of those games. I wonder if I should pick up the 3DS one. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the, the 3DS one ha- has like, does it have all of, all of the games from, from the two I don't know. Uh, Wii U versions? I don't know. Um, or, I mean, it, it would be so smart if they released those games and then had them, um, had like a, you know, that they could just like link back to, uh, streaming the, uh, the originals on uh, the mm-hmm. NES, uh, switch online, um, or, or even like portals to buy them. Cause like, you know, when, when you play the, the fun parts from Kid Icarus, it makes you curious to go back and like actually play the whole game. Um, that I remember it sending me back to a lot of uh you know the the original NES games um as they were on the the Wii U um so yeah I just uh, I look all I want are excuses to revisit old stuff that I've loved forever <laughs> <laughs> that's all I want well uh my I feel like we're hitting on a lot of common themes um and and honestly I think it's not that surprising that like video games have exploded in 2020 like i think a lot of people are turning to video games for this sort of outlet but uh i think my my third thing that i'm thankful for uh from nintendo in 2020 hit at like the exact right time um when the pandemic really started to spread in the u.s and the stay-at-home orders came into place animal crossing new horizons was there um to try also, to make, also my number three yeah to, <laughs> so. tr- to try to make sense of like the craziness that was happening yeah. there was something just like very right about like the orderly nature of your island on animal crossing and how it's like yes yeah. i'm like very in control and just checking in every day and you got to like it was one of the things that was fun about uh new horizons that um i haven't had this experience since breath of the wild is like everybody was playing it at the same time and so everybody was making these like discoveries or everybody was uh like experiencing the game for the first time together and it was really fun to be able to check in with your friends and online like uh every day and just see and hear about everybody's progress what i i mean it, it, it is obviously on 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 my list as well um, and I think one of the things that I liked is that it, it not only uh, like united sort of the gaming audience all behind uh, one game that we were all playing, uh, but also uh, reached outside of the normal crowd of people who were like posting about games mm-hmm. that they were playing. 
Um, and it became a thing that, you know, I, I, I don't share too many screenshots of like stuff from my switch, but when animal crossing came around, I was like, oh yeah, that is how I'm going to engage with this. Um, but also like getting messages from people that uh, I know who aren't super into games, uh, who decided to pick up a switch so they could play animal crossing. Um, my friend Trisha, you know, like got back in touch with her because she had questions about, you know, breeding flowers or whatever. And now she's way better at it than I am. <laughs> and, you know, uh, even um, like introducing Sarah to it right away. And then her like sort of leaving her tent to just sit there for, you know, two months or something. And then her realizing that it's a game that she really liked and could get into. Um, I, I think the game just had such extraordinary power to, um, you know, not just excite people who played games, but excite everyone to play games um, is just remarkable. And like, you know, you're right that there's like an orderliness to it and like a domesticity to it that uh, and like a social aspect uh, that all feels very nice. Uh, but it's also just cute, right? Mm -hmm. Like everyone was having fun and like doing cute things. And uh, I, I don't know, it felt very like helpful and cooperative. Um, if you were looking for items and like you could reach out to any of your friends and they would tell you, you know, I, I would get texts from people being like, Hey, a, a friend of a friend of mine has really good turnip prices today. <laughs> um, that happened to me like four or five, six, seven times. Like, you know, just uh, people were looking out for each other as far as uh, animal crossing is concerned. And that's just, that feels warm and comforting and good. Yeah. It was really nice. And it like the timing could not have been more perfect. It was kind of insane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's can you imagine if they had like gotten it out when they had planned to at the end of 2019 yeah like i think it would have done really well but there's no way it would have had the impact that it ended up having yeah correct because like people wouldn't have looped back around for it yeah right? like mm -hmm. if it came out in like november or october or something um there's no way people would have gone back and been like oh yeah hey you know we could all be playing animal Cross." never would have happened no i think you're right because you know like uh i probably by the like uh, i think by like june or july i had pretty much exhausted you know my time with the game and yeah if it did come out in, in like november i'm sure i would have been at that point by march yeah so m my fourth one uh is actually three like mini ones that probably Ooh, that don't love it. that like don't really stand on their own, but that uh, I wanted to shout out. And the first one of that is Ring Fit Adventure. Um, even though that technically came out in 2019, I didn't experience it until 2020. And um, it's one of those like just really remarkable Nintendo things that when I first saw it, I was like, "This is." When we watched that video in like October of 20 or September 2019. Yeah. It was like really weird, kind of like Stepford Wivesy, and you're like, I don't really get this. Like, I do not understand it. And then when you finally like get your hands on it, and oh you're wait, like, hold wow. on, hold, I I I I, I want to go back to the announcement video for a second because I remember us talking about it, being like, wow, 80 bucks, that's expensive. I'm gonna hold out until they're <laughs> marked down to 40 bucks at Best Buy. Right? Did not happen. Yeah. <laughs> Did not happen. Not that a way. thing. Yeah, and like. And once you actually get your hands on it, you're like, whoa, like this is, this is really remarkable. And uh, yeah, so Ring Fit Adventure, big ups to Ring Fit Adventure. Okay, so I, I actually gave Ring Fit Adventure like a full spot on my list. Um, I, I want to hear what the other two uh, like uh, uh, mini parts of, of, of this entry is for you. Um, but uh, for, for me, Ring Fit Adventure was another like exact right time kind of game. Um, because, you know, obviously it came out last year and if we had gotten off our butts, we would have picked it up and, uh, you know, been where we'll look, we're a Nintendo podcast. Do we always take that responsibility super seriously and grab everything right away? No, we don't. Um, it just didn't seem necessary. It seemed like it was going to be bargained necessary. in like a year. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, in, instead, um, you know, it was selling for like three times it's, uh, the, it's sticker price. Um, and so by the time it actually, uh, we were able to get copies of it, I think it was like summer, right? Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, obviously this has been a hard year for a, a number of reasons, um, but uh, the summer was sort of when everything was happening at once. We were, you know, in the pandemic, uh, social unrest, and California was on fire, um, and our air was awful. 
Um, so like the one thing that I was able to do during the sort of like lockdown time that, you know, felt good and was like a genuine escape for me was go out for a walk, go for a run, um, get physical activity, do physical activity outside. Um, and then the smoke that filled the sky and made our air quality just absolute crap, um, d- just destroyed that. And, you know, it was maybe like two or three days into that really being like the new reality that we'd settled into, um, that I was able to get my hand on a ring fit adventure. And it gave that, it gave that physical activity, uh, portion of my life back to me, um, which, uh, just felt he, he, like, I don't know. I, 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 this is a year where I have, um, played Jedi Fallen Order and, uh, um, The Last of Us Part Two, and I think the only time I've cried playing a video game this year was playing Ring Fit Adventure because, <laughs> <laughs> because I, it, it's, it's stupid, but I felt like I was, I was like alive and, uh, like real again. Um, because like, there's only so much like, you know, uh, just sort of like, you know, hunkering down and being like, okay, we're just going to like wait out this storm and totally. then wait out this one too and wait out this one. Yeah. Um, and bring fit, like, uh, let me pretend that I wasn't for a little bit. Yeah. I totally get that. Um, so the other like kind of like mini ones, they're not like related to each other at all. But the second one is, oh, uh, yeah. So uh, the, the second one is Pokemon DLC. And the reason why uh, I think this is cool and like worth a shout out is just because, you know, like, um, the uh, Game Freak had a set pattern for a really long time where they would... Re- it, may, it actually may not have been a really long time. I think it was just, like, the last couple of releases where there would be a, uh, um, like, two versions of the game, then there would be, like, a third version that combined the two that was basically asking you to, like, buy the game again at full price. Um, yeah. There was also, like, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon the Pokemon games that were like a bl- pseudo remakes of like of the original Sun and Moon, but basically like people got. I feel like Pokemon, uh, the Pokemon company and Game Freak get a lot of guff for like not evolving and not doing new things. And I feel like this year with like the uh, DLC expansion packs to Sword and Shield, like that they are moving away. They're they're making it clear that they like are aware of like what how modern gaming works. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and like for sure that is something that like you know both both you and I played Sun and Moon, but well we you played one and I played the other. Um, yeah, and like we both enjoyed those experiences. And if like Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon were just like add-ons where we got to do more stuff, but bring our current Pokemon like our current party into it not like play the beginning of the game again um you know it's something that we might have done which is obviously what these dlc packs effectively do um so yeah i i agree that that it's also a a good move and then you don't have to buy a whole new game again um but uh, <laughs> but it is funny that if you want to have like the full version of it that you have to buy the game and the dlc so it's a it's an, it's <laughs> right. an eighty dollar expenditure if you want the whole experience, which is a lot. And if you if you really want like the whole experience, oh, no, you got to buy both. <laughs> That's how they get you. That is in fact how they get you. What so what what is the third part of your? The third um, one is the most is the most pithy of all. It is the return of my Nintendo physical rewards to the my Nintendo this store. This was mine. <laughs> this was one of mine. <laughs> Mark, I told you these are identical. <laughs> <laughs> um, just thank goodness for something for us to spend our platinum points on. It was one of the really yes. fun things about um Club Nintendo back during the Wii era is that every year they would have these like physical rewards that you could get, like calendars or just really fun things. And they have been missing from the US My Nintendo rewards program since that program launched. And so it is nice to see them slowly reintroducing those uh and some of them have been really fun yeah and you know there there was a right when they like started doing it you and i were very excited about it to the point where we were talking about them uh every time they were announced on our news episodes um but there have been a couple uh that have released since they started doing it again that like we haven't gotten around to talking about on on the show um, you know, th- there's like a, a Breath of the Wild like notebook that Matt Acevedo like tagged me in a, a Twitter post about, um, being like, Patrick, you'll like this. <laughs> uh, and of course he's right. 
Um, but yeah, you know, even when it hasn't been easy or possible to uh, get these things, Mark, I hope you are happy with your Mario 35th anniversary pins. I'm so jealous. <laughs> um, it's it's I look, I'm I'm a sucker for the uh, you know Nintendo artificial scarcity thing. Um, or not artificial, it's, it's real, but they do it on purpose. <laughs> um, that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, since there's no, like, Amiibo or anything like that this year, um, it, it's cool to have, um, some cool stuff like that fr- from the website. Yeah, completely agree. Um, so Mark, you have, we've now, we're, we're through my list. We've done all the things for which I am thankful. <laughs> do you, you've got, you've got one left? Nope, that's it. Oh, perfect. Uh, Mark, what did I tell you? We were thankful for all the exact same things this year. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a, a, a narrow year for Nintendo, um, which uh, results in us having sort of the same things for which to be thankful. We didn't really talk about, um, like, uh, Paper Mario or uh, the upcoming uh, Fire Emblem, both things that we are either excited about or liked uh, while they were happening, um, but just don't really make our list as, like, notable things to be thankful for. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, I do think that it was a, a clearly, like, a unique year for Nintendo and maybe not the year that we would have gotten without COVID. But I, I don't know that I would describe it as, like, narrow. I think it was just, like, different. Like, I think everybody's lives were so like singularly focused as much or it was everybody's lives mm-hmm. were changed by a single event in a way that I don't know has happened for so, like a really long time right definitely not in our lifetime has like the entire world lives been focused right. by like this like single event and so I think that like it was narrow from I think Nintendo was just kind of like doing what they always do but I think our perceptions right. of it were colored by that event. And so that's why it feels like it was such like a narrow year. But I think that's just how we experienced it. Yeah, I, that, I mean, that, that, that is certainly possible. I, I think there's also like something to, um, you know, you're right that the, it has been a long time since the entire world has been united by like a, a single event or phenomenon. Um, but uh, you sort of double that by uh, like the internet and the ease at which we share our experiences of it. Um, that like it, it's uh, it's man. What well, just what weird times we're living in, you know? <laughs> totally. But grateful for, uh, you know, like the sweet release of video games. Oh, sweet release of, and the sweet release of talking about them with you on the show. Absolutely. <laughs> and with all of our um, listeners. Yes, absolutely. It's been great to hear um, from people about what they have enjoyed this year. Um, if you would like to share what you have been thankful for from Nintendo in 2020, uh, you should email us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail dot com, and we can talk about it on the show. All right, Mark, let's close this out. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Remember, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. If you like the episode, you can share it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you share stuff. Uh, we appreciate it when you do that. Helps people find the show um, on Twitter. You can follow us. I'm at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell. And the show is at Nin Cart Society. We also have a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape Betty. You can get more of his music by going to apebetty.com or by listening right now. <laughs> For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Michelle Veray. And I'm Kimberly Trung, and we are the host of Crush Fictionally, a podcast all about your favorite fictional characters from movies, TV shows, and more. Each episode, we pick a theme, curate a list of characters that we love, why we love them, and some fun facts about the people who created them. So if you've ever felt a true connection with a fictional character, tune in to Crush Fictionally on Campfire Media or wherever you find your podcast. Campfire.